Hey, it's Barbie day. As you can see, I am dressed as Barbie. I just wanted to show somebody my outfit because I feel heckin' cute. I have pink. Yeah, I even have pink freckles. <laughs> And that's my dress. I'm going to see Barbie. Bye! Hey! So it's Thursday the 20th and I just came back from seeing Barbie. You see my little ribbon in the back. Um, I went to go see it with Boy Wonder, my sister, my cousin. It was amazing. It was feminist. It was forward thinking. It was a physical manifestation of the existential crisis that is to be a woman. It was immaculate. Comedy. Scathing wit. Chef's kiss. Like, if you were on the fence about going to see it, please, please go see it. And please, please, please take your children. It's top notch. And I just came back from seeing Barbie. We took lots of pictures. I'll disperse some through here. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. And I'm bad like the Barbie. I'm a doll, but I still wanna party. Pink felt like I'm ready to bend. I'm a ten, so I pull in a can. Like Jazzy, Stacy, Nikki. All of the Barbies is pretty. Yeah, Barbie merch. So, AMC had a collectible Barbie, which is actually Margot Robbie. I'll make sure you guys can like see her. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I must have her. And she came with a popcorn pen. That's a Corvette. Yeah, so it's everything. I was like, I couldn't leave it. I had to bring it home with me, so. Yeah, okay, so back to <laughs> book content before I get distracted. Um, I finished a book today. It's called Aquacorn Cove, and it's by Kay O'Neill. And if that sounds familiar, they did Princess Princess and the Tea Dragon Society, top notch. Aqua Corn Cove is no different from its predecessors. I'm gonna give this one 4.5 carats. It is about a girl who is visiting family members in this like seaside village and fishing is like the way that the families make their money. There are all of these huge storms that have been decimating the place. So she and her father leave the city to come there and help clean up. But they realize that the storms are getting worse and that's because the, there is this aquatic um, community that is basically being overfished. So they can't protect the village like they used to. There's just not enough of them left in the ocean to do so because of overconsumption. Um, my heart hurt. I shed a single tear. It's beautiful. It's gay. It's glorious. And the art is so soft. Like, you guys see that? Okay. Yeah, like it's so soft and it was magical. I'm basically reading File Lady Fortune um, by Chloe Gong. I just started it but I realized that it is a um, mystery kind of high fantasy like her other books are so I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm like five pages into it. Um, I'm hoping it picks up soon. We're getting to the part where they start introducing the main character, and I know that she is one of the detectives on the case, so hopefully I am going to enjoy this. So I picked this up, and I picked the two novellas up, A Foul Thing, and I've, I believe it's called A Foul Thing and A Foul Murder, and they are in a duology 
in and of themselves called A Violet Call. So um, I actually got a foul thing from the library thinking that it was a graphic novel based on these characters. But when I realized it was a novel, I realized that it's missing its its partner. It's a duology and the library only had one. So I went ahead and got it for digitally digitally from the library. So I have both parts. I'm also currently reading a, another Chelsea Pritchard novel. I first read This Lie Will Kill You like four years ago and absolutely adored it. I believe this one is called Lies Like Poison. So I'm currently reading those. And for the first time, I actually put together a pile of books to take to Half Price Books or the library, basically to unhaul, and it's pretty hefty. I'm probably going to do my very first unhauling video. I've never unhauled books before. I've let other, I've just like given them away or let other people borrow them. I've never really made a like concerted effort to be like, okay, these books I no longer want to have in my library, and I want to make room for other things. Um, so yeah, looking forward to doing that. Um, it's so hot and I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, my birthday is in two days. I'm gonna be 32, 32, mm, mm, 32, 32. Mm, mm. I don't feel 32. Uh, just like a FYI there. Still very much feel like a child. Um, so we have birthdays coming up at the end of the month and then we have Evo, which I have been practicing for nonstop, which is why my reading vlogs have slowed down. Um, but from today, I'm still reading, so don't come for me. But yeah, we'll be at Evo. Um, I'm super excited about that. Then me and the bestie have a cruise, and I'm just thinking about all of the reading I'm going to get done on the boat. I'm so excited for an actual vacation, because I need one desperately. But yeah, that's all that's been going on so far, and I will catch you up later. It's been a little bit and I'm here to tell you that in the time frame of that little bit from finishing Aquacorn Cove to today's date of July 26th, I have not finished any books. <laughs> Just get that out of the way, off the shoulders. I have not finished any novels, but I have procured more. So the 22nd was my birthday and I got some books for my birthday. So we're going to go over those. So these are all from Boy Wonder and I got The Accursed Vampire by Madeline McGrain. And it's basically about three wayward like vampire children that are under like a spell or a curse of a witch so every time that witch asks them to do something they have to do it and if they fail they are like horrible consequences so they're on a mission and journey to find a missing grimoire for the witch and that's what this story is about um it's a little younger than i thought it was uh but i'm close to the beginning of chapter six in here so i'm about 60 pages in and the art is cute so, you know. And his mom is a queen. Vampire royalty back in the day, not recently. So I liked that. Like, that's... That's his mom. Look at her with her little crown on. It's so nice to see people that look like me in comics. I love that. The next thing I got 
was Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Trista Matier and it's feminist poetry and the back says if you were only meant to be beautiful we wouldn't have to put you down here in the dirt so excited for that and then I got I think they're the first two in the Goldie Vance book series not graphic novels these are regular novels but one is called the Hocus Pocus Hoax and the other one is called the Who the Hotel Who Done It. And Hocus Pocus says, Now you see it, now you don't. Prepare to be amazed by Goldie Vance. Goldie lives in this <laughs> Goldie lives the sweet life at the Cross Palms Resort Hotel. Her dad, Art, is the manager. Cheryl, the concierge, and Rob, a fellow valet, are Goldie's best friends. And Walter Tui, her mentor, is the hotel detective. Just to put a cherry on top, Goldie's crush, Diane Kimura, works at the nearby record store Wax Lips. Goldie is excited to solve more mysteries. And the Cross Palms League of Magical Arts Convention is the perfect place to start. That sounds like a blast. I'm very excited for that. And then in the Hotel Done It, which I believe is the first one because they're kind of like introducing the characters. Um, while life at the Cross Palms is always busy, the resort is currently overrun with Hollywood types, filming the hottest new creature feature, and tensions are at an all-time high. Even Goldie's mom is on the movie set playing a mermaid warrior. So that sounds like a blast. And then the last book I got was Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dawn. If this sounds familiar, it's because it was one of my favorite books this year and I have already completed it. But I needed it on my shelf and every time I went into Barnes & Noble, it was not there. So now I have my own beautiful hardcover copy. Okay, so those are books that I own. Let's get to the books that I got from the library the other day. And before we start on that, I want to talk about a library book that I've been reading. So I've been reading Mar uh, Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones with the book club girlies. Sarah has already completed the book. Brie and I are behind. I am 159 pages in and there's only 242 pages in the book. So less than what? I'm less than 100 p pages away from finishing the novel. So that should be done either today or tomorrow. And then we can move on to other things because I have so many things to read. <laughs> now it went from being like, oh, there's not enough or I need to pick up more or I'm a mood reader to I'm overwhelmed by what I have to, what the options are. <laughs> so these are the books that I picked up from the library yesterday. Papaya Salad by Elisa Masolari. Masal like, the art is so beautiful. Like, sir, you're gorgeous. Look at those end covers. <laughs> okay, and it says that this is based on a true story, a story the protagonist told me when I was a child, which I stumbled across again as an adult in form of a diary collecting all of his memories. I took care of those memories with a sense of freedom and spontaneity, truly living those moments inside me and turning them through a deeply personal journey into hopefully evocative images. One sometimes struggles to guess which direction to the direction the winds will take, but there's always a good reason to travel. Like, look at that art. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this. The next thing I got is Magic and the Shinigami Detective. And this is part of the Case Files. I'm going to assume it's Henri instead of Henry uh, Davenforth. This is the first Case File. And it's written by someone named Honor Racateur. So I'm going to assume their name is Henri because that's the French way to say it. And the back says, when the night foxes boldly break into the 4th precinct's evidence building, it causes quite the stir. The break-in is daring enough, but their method shreds the magical wards and protections on the building like confetti paper. To say the police are alarmed by this is the understatement of the century. To his astonishment, Captain Gregson has Henri work the case like a detective. Even more astounding, he assigns Henri a partner. The Shinigami Detective. The woman is famous for killing the most destructive rogue witch of the century, and no one is quite certain where she's from. Every officer in the precinct is either in awe of her or a little frightened, but Henri is just baffled. What is he supposed to do with her? So I'm excited about that. And then I was able to pick up Death or Glory, Volume 1. I think I picked up the first, like, two or three issues of this, or I was thinking about picking up the issues because the cover looks super familiar to me. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. 
and essentially says, Meet Glory, raised off the grid in a convoy of truckers, the last men and women fighting for the for true freedom on the American open road. Now in order to pay for her beloved father's life-saving surgery, Glory has three days to pull off four dangerous cross-country heists with mob killers, crooked cr cops, and a psycho ex-husband all out to bring her in or die trying. Okay, this might move to the top. I might read this first. I might read this first. The next book I picked up is called Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison, and it says it's a werewolf novel, so that's exciting. And I didn't know this, but this is adult fiction. I thought it was YA all this time, but it's adult fiction, so. A young woman in need of a transformation finds herself in touch with the animal side in this gripping insights of novel. Rory Williams, excuse me, Rory Morris isn't thrilled to be moving back to her hometown, even if it's only temporary. There are bad memories there, but her twin sister Scarlett is pregnant, estranged from the baby's father, and needs support. So she returns to the place she thought she put in her rear view. After a night out at a bar where she runs into Ian, an old almost flame, she hits a large animal with her car. And when she gets out to investigate, she is attacked. I don't want to read anymore. I don't want to spoil myself. If you want to know more, read the, read the synopsis. I'm... So excited for that. I feel like werewolves do not get enough love. They just don't. The next one I got is Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. So I own three books by her that I haven't read yet, but I love when murder mysteries or thrillers take place in theaters. Movie theaters, acting on stage theaters, it does not matter. Like theater as a location is my jam. So when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up, even though it's gigantic. Oh my god, how big is this? Ooh, don't want no spoilers, I just want to know how big the book is. Who were past 370 pages? Yeah, it's more than 370 pages. And inside, it says movie making can be murder. The Project. Final Draft. A psychological horror being filmed at a house deep in a forest, miles away from anything or anyone in the wintry wilds of West Cork. The Lead. Former soap star Adele Rafferty has stepped in to replace the original actress at the very last minute. She can't help but hope that this opportunity will be her big break, and she knows she was lucky to get it after what happened the last time she was on set. The problem, something isn't quite right about Final Draft. When the strange goings on in the script start to happen on set two, Adele begins to fear that the real horror lies off the page. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, that was only like a quarter. I went a little nuts, but they were feeding me so good. I went to the new section of the YA, because I, I love doing that just to see what's coming out, and there were like three murder mysteries actual to goodness mystery tagged novels how could i leave them behind so let's get started on them i'm most excited about this one because how can you not be excited about murder on a school night like look at these little lady detectives i love them this is by kate weston and it says there's never a good time to find a dead body i agree but what about finding a dead body while you're trying to kiss your crush? Carrie had different plans for her first high school party, like not going. Instead, her BFF mystery fanatic, I love a mystery fanatic, Annie has roped her into going to the party to investigate who's cyberbullying Heather, the most popular girl in school. Getting close with her crush is odd enough, but when the two of them discover Heather's second-in-command, Helena, suffocated by a menstrual cup? Things get really weird. Ew. <laughs> and when a second student turns up dead, this time with a sanitary pad across the eyes, Annie and Carrie, no matter how much she resists, are officially on the case to stop the menstrual murderer. Period. That was so dorky. <laughs> this hilarious murder mystery rom-com investigates what happens when social media turns bloody and how a period-themed murderer can really cramp your style. This one's also kind of big. 372 pages, but the text is kind of large. So, 
Hopefully that'll be a fast read. Then I picked up this small graphic novel called Ten Pens because it's about bowling, which I love to do, and it has two black people on the cover. I didn't really need much more. It states that Adrian Fisher, your average 15-year-old kid, discovers bowling and a hidden technique that with the proper training can take him to the top. Through hyper-focus and calming his emotions, Adrian hones his crane technique against the evil forces of despair. So we got a 15-year-old kid using bowling to fight depression. Chef's kiss. The next thing I have is A Long Stretch of Bad Days by Mindy McGinnis. In a small town, nothing stays buried is what the cover says. I need to know who is doing McGinnis's covers. Because there's this cover, there's the initial insult cover, and there's another one. And all of the covers are gorgeous. I was worried about picking this up because I thought that might be part of that series and I haven't read that series, but I believe that that is a duology, so I should be okay with this. And in this one, Lydia Chast doesn't mind living in a small town. She just doesn't want to die in one. A lifetime of hard work has put her on track to attend a prestigious journalism program and leave Henley behind, until a school error leaves her a credit short of graduating. Undeterred, she has a plan to earn that credit, transform her listener-friendly local history podcast into a truth-telling expose. She'll investigate the long stretch of bad days, a week when Henley was hit by a tornado and a flash flood, as well as its first and only murder, which remains unsolved. But Lydia needs help to bring grit to the show. Bristol Jameson has a bad reputation and a foul mouth, but she also needs a credit to graduate. The unexpected partnership brings together the Chass family, a pillar of the community, and the rough and tumble Jamesons, with Bristol hoping to be the first in her family to graduate. Together they dig into the town's worst week, determined to solve the murder. Their investigation unearths buried secrets, but the past is never far and some don't want it to see the light. As threats escalate, the girls have to uncover the truth before the dark history of Henley catches up with them. Super excited about that. This one's also kind of thick. 360 pages. Alright, we're we're almost done. We got four books left. Five, five books left. We're almost done. I feel like I tell you this every video. I feel like every video I have gone and collected some other novel. What is wrong with me? Okay, so I picked up volumes one and two of Ghosted in LA, and I don't know what it's about, but I tried to get them earlier and never got the chance, so I'm gonna get them now. And it says that Daphne Walters moved to Los Angeles to follow the love of her life, or so she thought. Really awakened from her happily ever after, she finds herself suddenly both out of place to live and without a reason for being thousands of miles from home. In the midst of her heartbreak, she finds her way to Rykoff Manor, a derelict apartment complex that isn't as abandoned as it seems. It turns out that the manor isn't just packed with mid-century charm, it's also teeming with lovesick ghosts and aspiring actor ghouls. Daphne might need to crash on this haunted couch for a while, but having undead roommates might be more than she bargained for. And it's Boombox, which I love. Like, literally, if it's put out by Boombox, I'm going to pick it up. Because I love them. Like, I love the art. I love the stories that they choose to produce. All of it. So, yeah, that's volumes one and two of that. Hi, Geronimo. Then I have Constantine, Distorted Illusions by Cami Garcia and Isaac Goodhart. I'm excited to find out about baby bad boy Constantine. It says John Constantine is and has always been a magician of the highest caliber who doesn't need additional training from any highbrow magician. Thank you very much. Sensing an opportunity for independence, Constantine falsely accepts an apprenticeship in the United States to instead become the lead singer of his best friend's punk band, Mucus Membrane. When the band begins to dabble in magic, a complicated spell gets out of hand and the disastrous consequences might be more than... Constantine can handle. Huh. And this is a completely encompassed graphic novel. So, that's cool. Alright. Last two books. Last two books. Last two books. Last two books. And both of these are mysteries. So these complete the three mysteries that I saw on the shelf. There were actually a few more, but I was like, I should calm myself. So, let's start with Stateless by Elizabeth Wayne. 12 competitors, one prize, many reasons to kill. 
When Stella North is chosen to represent Britain in Europe's first air race for young people in 1937, she knows all too well how high the stakes are. As the only participating female pilot, she'll face constant challenges to prove she's a worthy competitor. But promoting peace in Europe feels impossible to Stella when civil war is raging in Spain and the Nazis are gaining power. And when, right at the start, someone resorts to cutthroat sabotage to get ahead of the competition. The world is looking for inspiration in what's meant to be a friendly sporting event. Stella is expected to befriend the other 11 competitors from charismatic Vittorio, Vittorio excuse me, flying for fascist Italy to Ernest Sebastian flying for Nazi Germany and volatile infuriating Tony flying for France. But each of the racers is hiding a turbulent and violent past and any one of them might be capable of murder, including Stella herself. I love an unreliable narrator. Let's see if this lady is capable of murder. And then the next one and the last one is called Liar's Beach by Katie Katongno. And the inside says, will the truth come out at Liar's Beach? Michael Linden, or just Linden to his preppy boarding school pals, doesn't belong in wealthy storied Martha's Vineyard. But when his roommate Jasper invites him to spend the end of the summer at his family's massive beachfront home, August House, Lyndon tries his best to fit in. He wouldn't call it lying, even though the August House is full of liars. Then someone is found unconscious in his pool, and everyone has someone to hide, something to hide. Jasper, Eliza, his twin sister, Wells, their older brother, and their friends. The accident is written off as just that, an accident, but Lyndon begins to wonder. Enter Holiday Proctor. That is an awesome name. Holiday? That's so cute. Oh my god. Lyndon's childhood friend and the only person on the island who knows the truth about him. There's nothing Holiday loves more than a good mystery, and she's convinced there's a murderer on the vineyard. The only question is, who? So yeah, those are the books that I picked up. Um, I'm almost done with Missing Clarissa, and then I'm probably going to do Death or Glory and 10 pens and then I will probably start murder on a school night or runtime those are probably be the next books that I'm reading so yeah thanks for checking in with me I will see you guys again soon because I have put together my very first list of books to unhaul and there's like 30 of them, I think. So we're going to go through all of them, tell you the reasons that I'm unhauling them, and then we're going to go to uh, Half Price Books and the library to go drop off their new conquests. See you next time!